<laughs> it's Friday, fool, and you need this tool. Welcome to another glorious episode of It's Friday Fool, You Need This Tool. My name, Kyle Voss, and every Friday, I bring you a tool that is used here in this shop or featured on this channel. This week is a, this week is a special edition of You Need This Tool. And it's special because it's all carbon fiber. That's right, carbon fiber. All right, the first thing we need to get out of the way because I've already heard this umpteen million times on all my carbon fiber videos, and that is, oh, you gotta have pre-preg to do carbon fiber, or you have to have an autoclave, or you have to do it this way, or you have to do it that way. It's not true. It might be true if you're building an airplane, or an Indy car, but we're not. And so, so you can use other methods of making carbon fiber for other things doesn't have to be aerospace technology to make a bracket or a cover. So what I'm gonna do on this episode of You Need This Tool is I'm just gonna give you basically a crash course on carbon fiber and the tools that are needed to create it. Now like I said, if you're familiar with carbon fiber, there are a ton of ways to create carbon fiber. There's what they call infusion, there's wet layup, there's pre-preg, there's all kinds of ways. The way that I'm gonna show you today, or the tools that I'm gonna show you today are more for like a wet layup and, and some of the tools will be used in infusion. Wet layup is probably gonna be your best bet if you're just getting started. And that's what this is all about. I think a lot of people are scared of carbon fiber. They're scared that it's too hard to do to make real carbon fiber and it's not. And so this is, I'm just trying to get you guys to get out there and experiment a little bit and, and basically get your feet wet and then once you decide if it's something that you like or you don't like, then you can kind of move into the more advanced uh, methods of making carbon fiber. So first things first, the fabric. All right, the carbon fiber fabric. What I've got here is just a twill weave. It's got some blue tape on the edge just to keep it from fraying, but it's just your standard twill weave. I think it's like a 5.7 ounce twill weave right here. You can get this in, in small sections. You can also get it in big rolls. Like this, they use, the rolls usually come 50 inches wide and as long as you want to buy it. So it's by the running yard and the running yard is usually 50, 50 inches wide. The second thing is the resin. So the first thing you want to make sure you do is use epoxy resin. There's other kind of resins. There's a polyester resin, which is just for looks. It has no strength characteristics to it. You want to stick with the epoxies. There are a bunch of epoxy resins out there. I'm not going to go into like Name me name brands and some are for strength, some are for flexibility and there's that's just gonna be up to you to choose. But you wanna pick a good epoxy resin. This, uh, this stuff here is called Air Epoxy. There's, like I said, a bunch of brands. I will, I'm gonna put links to all the stuff I show you in this video in the description so you can go check it out. I'll have several different brands of epoxy resin. I'll have some carbon fiber fabric. I'll actually have some starter kits and all the other tools that I'm gonna show you in this video. So when you're doing a wet layup on carbon fiber with an epoxy resin, what you need to do, the best way to do it is a, a vacuum bagging process, which basically compresses all the layers of carbon fiber and sucks out any extra resin that's not needed. So, you know, if you're using carbon fiber, you want strength and you want it to be lightweight. And so you don't want, you want it to be compressed, which is gonna give you the strength, and you wanna pull out any extra resin that's not necessarily needed, which is gonna give you the, the lightness that you're looking for. So those two, combined is where and vacuum bagging is going to help you acquire those two things, strength and lightness. All right, so here are the tools that are needed for vacuum bagging. First thing you need is a vacuum pump. Now, there's a bunch of different vacuum pumps out there, a lot of different brands. Some of them are really expensive. Because this is an entry level video, I'm going to show you what I use. This is a very uh, inexpensive option for you. This is more of like a medical style suction pump that's used in the medical industry. It'll pull 25 inches of vacuum, which is plenty. And you can get these for around, I think you can get them, actually get them for under 100 bucks. So this is what I use. This one here is called a Vacutech. There's several brands. Like I said, I'll drop some links in the description. 
Go check this out. I get a lot of people asking me about vacuum pumps and what they use. This is what I use. To show you all the tools needed in vacuum bagging, I'm actually show you how the layers layer and that'll kind of make more sense on why you need them. Like I said before, there is a bunch of ways to do this. I'm gonna show you one of the most basic ways. It'll kind of give you an idea of how everything works. So the first thing you got is your mold. And we're just gonna act like this table is a flat mold. It could be any shape, okay? And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna wax that mold. So you're gonna need a high temp mold release wax, all right? And this is basically just like car wax. It's a carnauba wax. You're gonna put this on your mold. It's gonna make it real waxy. And this is gonna help the part break loose from the mold once you're done with it. All right, so first step, the wax. The second part is also a release agent that's gotta be applied to the mold and it's called PVA. And what this does is it kinda reminds me of like when you was in school and you'd take Elmer's glue and you'd put it on your hand and you'd let it dry and then you'd peel it off and it's like the skin was peeling off. That's kinda what this is. So you put this on in a very thin coat over the wax and it's just a barrier that can peel out. Just like Elmer's glue, for the most part. PVA, number two. The third thing in the system is this gooey tape. Now this is just a general sealant tape. Um, it's kinda like putty, it's like a really sticky putty. What this is for is you wanna outline your mold with this, and then your vacuum bag material will actually stick to it. Number three. Now to the actual process of laying up the carbon fiber and stacking the vacuum bagging material on top of it. So just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna act like this is the mold. And we have layers of carbon fiber here. We got four layers. You've already put down your wax. You've already put down your PVA. You're gonna start laying in your carbon fiber. You're gonna lay this in. You're gonna wet it out with your resin. Second layer, if you really wanna get fancy, you wanna put it at a 45 for strength. Most of the time I don't do it. It doesn't really, it's not that big of an issue for me. Second layer of carbon fiber, you wanna wet it out with your resin. Third, fourth layer, same thing. You wanna get it all wet out. They make rollers that are used to get some of the air bubbles out so you can roll these out. It kinda helps um, wet out the fabric even better than it already is. So there's a roller. To recap, you got the mold, you got the wax, you got the PVA, you got an outline with the gooey stuff. You've laid in your four layers of carbon fiber. They are wet out. Now, it's time to start stacking the vacuum bag material. The first layer that goes on top of the carbon fiber. All right, so the first layer that goes down on top of the carbon fiber is what they call peel ply. Or release film. There's several names. There's, it's gonna come, when you start looking this stuff up, you're gonna see that it looks totally different. Generally, your, your peel plies are more like a fabric based and your release films are more of like a plastic base, all right? Uh, what you'll want is you'll want the release films that have the holes in them because you want that resin to be able to drain through it. And basically what this is, is kind of like a material that doesn't stick to the resin and it's easy to pull off. So, that being said, your release film goes down first, all right? Just inside all the gooey stuff, you don't want to stick it to the gooey stuff. The next layer that you got is gonna be your breather cloth or breather ply. Now, what this does is it's a thick, um, kind of wooly or I don't even know what it's made out of. It's synthetic, I'm sure, but it kind of lets air pass through it, all right? That's why it's called breather ply. It kind of helps it breathe. This is gonna allow the vacuum pump to pull all of the air out from underneath the vacuum bag in an even, e full even distribution. It also absorbs the extra resin. So you got your release film that has the holes in it, then you got your breather ply, and what happens is when you pull vacuum, the actual extra resin comes up through those holes and is absorbed into this breather ply. All right, and then on top of the breather ply, you have your vacuum bag material. Now this is the layer that actually sticks to the sticky stuff, okay? You want it to seal. You want no pinholes, you don't want no air holes, you don't want anything in it. Recap really fast. You've got mold release, PVA, wetted out carbon fiber, then you got the first layer of peel ply or release ply, then you got your breather cloth, and then over top of all of it, you have your vacuum bag material. Now this is a stretchable, there's several different kinds. All this stuff is really cheap except for the carbon fiber and the resin. The rest of this stuff's really cheap. Then all you have to do is poke a small hole in your vacuum bag material. You put a little vent in the top of it, you take your vacuum pump, 
you tie it into the top of this, it sucks all the air out, even some of the extra resin, compresses that carbon fiber, and you let it sit till it sets up. Once it's hard, you can peel all this stuff off, you pull your part out, it's light, it's strong, it's ready to go. Hope I'm not losing you guys. I hope this all makes sense. I don't want to lose you. All right guys, that's it. That's this week's tool, carbon fiber stuff. It's really easy. It's not near as hard as most people make it out to be. What I'll do is the links that I put in the description for all this stuff, I'll try to lay them out in the simplest form that I can. I'll start off with like carbon fiber kits, which comes with your resin and carbon fiber together. If you just want to do flat, you know, wet layup. If you want to try the vacuum bagging stuff, I will put those tools and stuff in there also. But um, don't let it scare you. You know, I suggest you go buy a kit, try it out. Um, who knows, you might have a new hobby. There you go, this week's tool. As always, thank you for joining me. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. It's Friday, fool!